Celtics Beat is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNX Media Network. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new edition of Celtics Beat. Great to have you here with us. Adam Kaufman, Evan Valenti, of course, our guest du jour, the guest of honor, the guest of the day, all of these things. Steve Bullpet from Heavy.com. We always love having him here. Steve, how's it going? <laughs> Living the dream. <laughs> Aren't we all? You know, I, I wasn't on last week. Ev, you know, carried the show, did a great job doing so. But uh, for anyone that may not know this, because I know I haven't been here in a couple of weeks, and and sure, there are other Celtics podcasts out there. If you're listening to this show, watching this show on YouTube, you probably check out some of the others. You're a seas junkie. We appreciate it. We respect it. We are willing to share the spotlight with others. But if I'm telling you for the first time, forgive me. They're pretty good. These Celtics, they're... They're pretty good. Five straight wins. They have made it eight of nine, as a matter of fact, out to a 20 and five start, which you don't need to check the standings, folks. That is the best record in the entire NBA. My question, though, just as a way to start us off, is what is the difference between this 20 and five start versus an unbelievable start last year under Joe Missoula? We know the makeup on the floor is obviously different. The makeup in the room is different. The way this team plays is different. But the records, very, very similar. And it wasn't too long after this hot start that the team slowed down and started to play a little bit differently, got a little bit caught up, got you know some internal stuff as well. And, and you know, obviously we're never quite entirely the same after. So what did they learn from last year to where they are right now? It starts at the head coach, Joe Missoula, to the top talent, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and filters all the way down. Steve, I defer to you. You watch this team quite a bit, obviously. You report on them. What makes them different this year from where they were at this time a year ago? I think the roster makeup. You know, frankly, uh, Kristaps Porzingis and Drew Holiday uh, in place of Rob Williams and Marcus Smart is an upgrade. and. You know, they, they get criticized for their depth, but I think their depth is pretty good. Um, you might not have some names or scorer type names that, that jump out at you coming off the pine, but I think the guys they have there are hustler types who aren't trying to do too much, which is important, uh, who are kind of look like they're committed to playing the game the right way. Uh, and um, I, I think that's, I think they're in, significantly better position than they were last year to that point there were and and this i'm not going to say this was wholeheartedly an issue last year maybe at points last year but definitely in recent years whether it was under email under brad before him it speaks to as you alluded to the the roster composition the makeup of the group which has obviously evolved over time other than you know keeping the true core core pieces together those being the jays it's their team first and foremost but it seems like you know under the the porzingis and the holidays of the world and even Derek white you know and, and al horford like remove your starting six you get to that depth, which, you know, early in the year, I'll admit, I was very concerned about it. And I wasn't alone. I think a lot of people were. But as it has sort of found a, a little bit of a rhythm, some of these guys, like you said, not a lot of household names, but maybe more importantly, it's a group of of, of players, it, it seems, that, that really know, understand, respect, are content with their roles. They are, in the truest form, role players and are good with it. And we've seen a lot of guys in, in recent Celtics history that may have been quote unquote role players that weren't necessarily always willing to accept the role. Is that a big part of, of what has you believing that they're better positioned now than they were before? I just think they have better players. And, and look, some of the improvement in the players is within the same people who were here last year. I think Derek White is better this year. Sure. I know uh, Sam Hauser is better. Um, you know, a guy, a, a shooter like Hauser, uh, given more reps, more time, more confidence, um, he's going to get better. He's getting his minutes every game now. And a shooter needs to know that a shooter needs to get his touches. Uh, and that's there for them. Um, yeah. And I think, like I said, Derek White, I believe too, 
uh, is a better version of the Derek than the Derek White we saw last year. He was good last year. He was very good. Uh, the numbers, the uh, on and off court numbers certainly pointed it out last season, right? But uh, I think he's even better this year. And uh, teaming in the backcourt with Drew Holiday, um, I think that's a really good defensive combination as well. Yeah, that's that's what makes the biggest difference for me, I think, between last year and this year. I think last year you had a, a team offensively that came out of the gates really hot. Uh, at, at certain points felt like defense wasn't a priority for them as much as, you know, just scoring the basketball because they were shooting the ball so well. It was almost like, a, who cares about defense? We're on fire. It's not going to matter what we do down there. We'll just focus down here and we'll be okay. The shooting came back to, you know, back to the pack a little bit. And all of a sudden they were, you know, a team that floundered a little bit. With And I, mean, I think at the time it was a West Coast trip that really kind of tripped them up. I think the Golden State game, they had circled on the calendar prior to the season starting, you know, was sort of part of the wheels falling off a little bit. This team defensively is just much better. I mean, it's personnel, it's, it's connectivity, it's, it's everything. They're just a much better defensive team. They held the magic team yesterday to the lowest rating, like of almost any team in the NBA this year offensively. I mean, I know the Magic aren't a great three-point shooting team, and it's kind of a, a, a game that Boston can obviously exploit, um, especially if the shots aren't falling for the Magic. But at the same time, they held the Magic team to their worst offensive output of the season. Um, so it's it's not like this team – I mean, it's several things, but it's not like this team doesn't understand the importance of defense. I think defensively – when you have Derek White and you have Drew Holiday, they set the tone and everybody up behind them just kind of falls in the line. Um, and I think that's going to serve them better, Kaufman, as we keep going forward here. I mean, they're 14 and four against, against teams over 500. I think defense has a lot to do with that. Yeah. Well, look, they're, they've got some better people. I mean, uh, you know, um, and I think it's, they're just more conscious of defense last year. Malcolm Brogdon said it after the last game and he put it on the line. He said, look, we just, you know, we didn't pay attention to defense as much as we should have go back to the uh, Pierce Garnett, Ray Allen teams. And um, you know, the big talk then was, Oh, it was Tom Thibodeau and his defense. But you talk to players back then. They said, look, no, this is doc rivers defense. The only difference is that doc steps aside and gives defense, gives Thibodeau and defense, a big chunk of every practice. So it wasn't like that Thibodeau was one pulling strings and stuff and, you know, uh, setting up a scheme that that was uh, hard to break. It's just that they paid more attention to it. It was a bigger part of their practice day. And I think you're seeing a little bit more of that this year. Um, And I, you know, clearly I think people didn't expect quite the defense that they're getting from from Chris Tapp's Porzingis um and that's been a huge thing as well I mean they're like you said connectivity but all the stuff we're talking about and I hate to cut this short because maybe we can end the the podcast after this <laughs> but <laughs> it's going to come down to the same thing it's come down to the last several years and I know we've talked about it before here right 2018 19 20 21 was different, but 22 and 23, the Celtics got eliminated because when push came to shove, when it became crunch time, they resorted to hero ball. Not because guys were jerks. It's like, oh, no, I'm going to, but it was more like, I'm going to take responsibility and go make a play here. Nice, but it takes you out. It takes you out of your offense, makes it easier for the defense. One-on-one becomes one-on-two and the games, they get flustered and games would fall away. There's no reason they should have lost the 2022 finals but they did so here we are it's going to come down to the same thing again and you just hope the Celtics fans I guess would hope that uh with Holiday and Derek White uh in the backcourt that they would kind of uh slow things down a lot slow things down because actually they want to play fast but but put things on a on a more uh, even keel with ball movement, with getting the ball side to side, with making the defense move. Because if this Celtic team moves the basketball, it is unguardable. 
these guys are unguardable as a unit. Uh, they've got too many ability, too many people who can spread the floor, too many guys who can beat closeouts and drive. Uh, and coming off the bench with uh, Al Horford, which is a ridiculous benefit to have, mm -hmm. and uh, a Sam Hauser, um, you know, they it's in their hands. I'll leave it at that. We'll get right back to Steve talking all things Celtics and the rest of the NBA. Before we do, Ev, how are the bets going? Well, I'm the <laughs> and per, per usual this season, Kaufman, terribly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's to discourage me from trying, Kaufman, and you there can you try go. too. You can score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets. With any winning $5 money line bet, it's 150 bucks. If your team wins, the teams that you pick to win the money line, they win, you get 150 bucks. Now, I will admit last week, I will pat myself a little bit on the back. My $5 money line winner to get you that buck 50, that cashed. And what did I do? I recommended whoever the, the Detroit Pistons were playing. And it just so happened to be the Indiana Pacers. And it, I don't know if you paid attention, Kaufman. The Pistons have lost 22 in a row. And that's just yeah, easy money. Yeah, I heard something about that. Yeah. This time, I'm actually going to – I'm going to stick with the Celtics on this one. Caesar minus 240 in Golden State. I don't – I as much as I respect Steph Curry, I think the Caesar are going to win this game. I think uh, you can get your buck 50 real quick with a money line bet, betting on the Celtics Tuesday night. In Golden State, that minus 240, real easy for you, trust me. You could be thinking about joining FanDuel. It's no better time to get in on the action than today. Right now, the app is my favorite way to do things. It's so easy. It's at your fingertips. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, overs and unders, awards at the end of the season, and much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston. Kick off the NFL season. Tip off the NBA season with FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. 21 plus and present in Massachusetts. Hope is here. First online real money wager only. $5 pregame money line wager required. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non travel bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Seen terms at sportsbook.fandle.com. Gambling helpline ma.org or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support. Play it smart from the start. GameSenseMA.com or call 1-800-GAM-1234. All right. Back to the show. So I'm I'm glad that you brought all of that up because I, I don't know about you guys or, or for anyone out there listening, watching, but I, I'm not the kind of person, at least at this stage of the year, talk to me in a couple months, but right now I'm not the kind of person that that knows off the top of my head this team is 20 and 5 that scoreboard watches that could tell you the bucks are a game and a half back in the east that the sixers are two games back in the east i can tell you that right now because i just looked it up but it's not something that i just can can readily you know spout out to people about this team's successes the thing that impresses me most about this team so far or the thing that i maybe pay attention to most it's not you know hey what's your record you know do you win do you lose it's how do you win? How do you lose? And the way in which this team is playing its games, obviously not to be cliche, but to the end, you know, we're, we're seeing maybe more consistent, even if not 48 minute efforts, you know, they're, they're dialing back in in crunch time. If maybe they let go of the rope a little bit in the third quarter, they're pulling back and yanking again in the fourth. They're not a team that, you know, obviously it happens from time to time, but generally they're not a team that gets blown out loses by 15 points or worse like so many other teams around the NBA I think one of their strengths is that connectivity that we talked about Steve and the fact that this this group it just it it has a I don't want to say it has a mindset that other teams of recent Celtics history haven't had I, I think they've all kind of talked a big game but this team more so than maybe some of those recent clubs has exhibited it has shown it on a consistent basis and we're only a little over a quarter of the way through the year or a third of the way through the year so there's there's a lot of sample size left obviously before we get to the playoffs but in this moment i would say for me that's something that's really encouraging yeah they, they had a couple of games earlier on this year where 
they had big leads and lost them. And it was, you know, some of the stuff we'd seen in the past. More recently, we're seeing them get big leads. And another team makes a run, they catch themselves. Celtics catch themselves. Um, and they're in, to me, lies a, a, a competitiveness that's got to show itself. And you look at this past, I think this past Friday night's game said quite a bit. Uh, third game in four nights for the Celtics against a team that hadn't played in, since Monday, Orlando. And Orlando always gives the Celtics a hard time because they are uh, the magic. That's that's an energy team. Mm. Celtics came in. It was a tight game for a while. And then they just pulled away. And it's like, you know, there's too much in the NBA to me, uh, this AAU ball mentality where you, you know, AAU, you come in and you play four games in a weekend and I'll get them next time and you get your run in and no one really pays a whole lot of attention um, <clears throat> to the scoreboard. And there's not the competitiveness that, that there used to be when guys played in outside in the summertime instead of in gyms where you had to keep the court. There was a keep the court mentality where if you lost, you sat for who knows how long. So you do whatever you could. I remember going down in New York City where you learned that you did not drive to the basket on game point. You either <laughs> hit a jumper or you would bleed internally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there's, I think there's more of that. I think there's more of that competitiveness. And we saw it this weekend. I mean, you know, you did that to Orlando. Uh, they were in town. They were in town on Thursday night while you were playing Cleveland. So they were they were sitting there relaxed and waiting for Friday's game. You beat them Friday, and then you came back and you validated it on Sunday. Um, so I, I, you know, I agree. You can glance at the record. I don't pay put a whole lot of stock into it. It's more, how are you playing? What kind of basketball are you playing? What are the signs? Um, when things get difficult, do you continue to move the ball? Do you stay with what you're supposed to do? Or do you go off script? Which is, again, what's killed them in the past. Um, this team should, yeah, we can dicker over what they should have in their pocket by now from the last few seasons. But um, this team this year, 2023-2024, it's on them. Um, I think I've said it before with a couple other teams, but no one can beat the Celtics, but they can beat themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a little bit less, I see a little bit less of a propensity to do so this year. You go back to those Cavs games earlier in the week too, like, there were just multiple shooting performances, whether it was Karis LeVert or with Donovan Mitchell or Darius Garland. A lot of retaliation, like the Celtics going to run, then one of those guys or maybe both of them would would get hot, you know, and they would claw back a little bit. And then again, that the resiliency of the, of the Celtics to say, okay, yeah, it's not going well. Let's reset this thing. Let's get everything right. Let's get back in our offense. Let's move it back. And they would just keep the – they kept – pushing the calves down even when they kept punching back up and it was that's the stuff that i think steve was just talking about um you know as has been impressed i was with both of these wins with the magic i don't want to dismiss the two games against cleveland because again that, that well, those, those games both felt like in the past one of those might have slipped you know slipped away or maybe or maybe both of them but you know they would have been it would have been games where boston just was up big and and thought they could cruise and, and and I was just impressed with the fact that they didn't just didn't back down and they didn't they just recentered themselves and found ways to get back on track. That's all. Well, the, the Cavs are a mess. That's true. That, that's, also that's true. I mean, I wrote um, I wrote about it last week, uh, toward the end of last week. They they are just they're a mess. There are some things going on there internally. I was hoping that uh, I talked to Donovan Mitchell one on one after Thursday night's game, um, hoping he was going to like take the opportunity to unburden himself. He didn't. Um, <laughs> but I've got enough there to know from talking to people more quietly that um, there's not a lot of happiness there. And um, they remember last year, the 51 win team and, you know, they were the the flavor of the month and all this yeah. stuff. And then they get to the playoffs and get knocked out by the Knicks in the first round and didn't look good doing it. Uh, looked really bad doing it. Um, so I, I don't know if that team just like, you know, 
got a dope slap and and took a standing eight count and never really recovered from it or what the deal is, but uh, they're, they're not happy there. And uh, now it's almost like they've got a bit of a reprieve because uh, Darius Garland and Evan Mobley are going to be out for weeks with injuries. So it's like, you know, well, I can't judge them without those guys. But when those guys were there, it wasn't good. So, you know, maybe a stay of execution, but we'll see what happens with that club and what they can do and you know what they're able to do as far as retooling things. I just appreciate that we're 25 games into the year and this team doesn't have a bad loss yet. And what I mean by that, I realize the right. game up by 15, 20 points, but, but what I mean by that, like you, you look at the five losses, they lost to, uh, you know, Minnesota who shockingly Timberwolves have the best record in the West. So that's, that's a number one team in its conference. I realize it wasn't at the time probably, but right now it is. And that's, that's the way it works. When we look back on these games, Philadelphia, that's a top three team in the East Charlotte, you know, that's, you know, Charlotte on a Monday. I tried to uh, tell you that yeah. just two seconds ago. That Charlotte oh, yeah. game is a bad loss, brother. Okay. I, I, I don't care what way you want to slice that. No, I, I, I guess that's true. I mean, Tatum exploded, you know, everybody else around him let him down. Uh, but, you know, Orlando, that's, you know, that's, that's a playoff team right now, as we talked about. Indiana right now is, is at least in the play in tournament and, and high energy, all this. So fine. Charlotte, one bad loss, but this is a tough trip obviously coming up you know uh, i realize golden state is not what it once was and this is that next challenge on tuesday so as you're listening to the show very potentially tonight um this you know you, you got the warriors there sacramento there a pair with la one clippers one lakers and you know say what you will about any of these teams and some of the ups and downs they've experienced but obviously having to go out and play these games there it's it's not quite the same as is you know we used to refer to like the texas triangle type trips all the time this isn't that uh i, I don't know what it is that always made those so horrifying but this is a, a little mini gauntlet here i think steve what what are the expectations for this trip and and what's what's a satisfactory result coming back home after you know just after christmas well with regard to golden state i would direct you i can put in a plug for our site Please. To the story that uh, um, I'm guessing Adam didn't read today um, about the Warriors and their issues. Um, yeah, I got uh, I was talking to a number of people around the league that really kind of laid it out for what's wrong with them and how it just doesn't look good uh, down the line. Um, but look, uh, the Clippers are playing better. Um, Sacramento's going to be tough there. Um, and that's on a back-to-back. -back. That is on a back-to-back -back as well. So, um, you know, what you want to see is the Celtics, if they do lose games, is it because um, just some shots didn't fall or is it because they reverted to old issues? You mentioned, you know, um, Jason Tatum went crazy in Orlando. I mean, should be in Charlotte. And other guys let him down. Well, maybe the other way around. Um, you know, if you, sure guys are going to get hot at different times and you got to feed them, but you don't want a guy taking over. You want to make sure that the ball moves and you get easy shots um, and you make the defense move and you take something out of the, the opponent for when they try to go back down the other end of the floor. So um, look, I, I would, again, uh, not look as much at the W and L as long as the Celtics are playing well here. On this trip, you take what you get. You know, if they, as long as they don't um, do a cave-in game, and, uh, and as long as they don't revert to um, my turn, your turn, no, it's my turn, um, then I think they'll be fine. I mean, uh, again, it's it's still December. Um, there's a lot more to go, and whereas like a, a team like uh, Golden State needs all these games to try to get itself together and prove that it's that it doesn't that it's not a team fighting for a play-in spot. The Celtics have just got to get themselves geared up for um, for playoff time. Doesn't mean you give away games now because you want to build the habits. 
you know, um, what's what you do every day. Like they say, you need practice reps. Well, games are reps as well for what comes down later in the year. So, you know, play good basketball and you can deal with the rest, I think. Well, as you said, it's December and uh, this holiday season, folks, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals, keep you energized on those jam-packed days. We all have them, obviously, as uh, the holiday season is is fully underway and Christmas approaches. Factor, which is America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up for any meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door seriously it's nice and easy you'll save time you'll eat well you'll stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all of your holiday to do's i'm still doing some shopping when i say that really i mean my wife is taking care of the shopping because she's just much better at all of this than i am but you can skip the stress skip the stress of meal prepping uh, over the holidays with factor you could choose from 35 plus weekly flavor packed fresh never frozen meals that support a healthy lifestyle that I so deeply covet, and meet your meal preferences, all delivered right to your door, ready to eat in only two minutes. That's it. Two minutes. If you're looking for calorie-conscious options over the holidays that also taste great, well, you can try delicious, dietitian approved calorie-smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. Head to factormeals.com slash Celtics50. That is factormeals.com slash Celtics50. Use that code Celtics50. Get 50% off. That is code Celtics50 at factormeals.com slash Celtics50 to get your 50% off. Let's get back. Kaufman, I, Kaufman, I got to just shout out Factor Meals real quick, just for yeah. 10 seconds. Please. I, I, I hosted a Christmas party here uh, this past weekend, and so I was up till one o'clock in the morning several nights this week just to try to get my house ready and yep. factor meals came in super clutch thank you so much between i have i got sent six meal kits uh eight smoothies and eight protein shakes and i was able to at least eat healthily nutritiously in two and a half minutes every single night i was up till one o'clock in the morning so shout out factor meals for fueling me go. last week thank you beautiful Love it. Yeah. Keep, keep them coming. Keep that door to door service too. It's perfect. Um, in terms of some of these individuals, we were just talking about Jason Tatum, Steve, and you know, obviously he's, he's having a great year and statistically, so long as he's healthy, he's always going to have a great year that that's just the expectation at this point in time. But in terms of, you know, going beyond the box score, what have you seen from him as he continues to grow mature? Obviously this, this team, so many people coming into the year once that, well, now that Marcus Smart is out of the way, and and this was, you know, I realize he was kind of a de facto captain, certainly a vocal voice on the floor, in the room, all of that, and, and I'm a Marcus Smart supporter. I'm not one of those people that was pleased to see him traded away, although I agree with the points that you made earlier about this just ultimately proving to so far be a better mix, a better collection. And uh, I, I didn't necessarily see that coming, but you know, the, the results bear it out. You can't argue it. And I think that there is some of the let Tatum be Tatum, let Brown be Brown, let these guys have full autonomy, truly take on the men, you know, let everyone take on their mentality in terms of it actually being their team when Marcus Smart is out of the picture. I think there is an element of that. What have you seen from Tatum here uh, roughly a third of the way through the season that maybe is a little bit different or or further along than than in the last couple seasons? Uh, just stronger going to the basket, simply. Uh, more, more interested in going to the basket and stronger when he does go. That's that's really it. Um, the rest of his game, there, same, et cetera. Uh, but, uh, but that part is, I think, huge. Just looking here to see what the uh, – does it surprise you that free throw opportunities are down for him this year? Not, I, I realize you're not going to get fouled every time you go to the basket, so I'm not saying those two things are, are necessarily directly correlated. But the, the fact that he's, he's not getting to the free throw line at, at quite the same clip as he did last season? No, not a not a concern. Um, you know, 
it's however many games in you know, what's, I don't know what the numbers are in terms of uh, free throws per game, but um, it's you know, last year was 8.4 this year. It's 6.7. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, a free throw and a half per game. Yeah. You know, um, it's just a not getting fouled once. Right. Yeah. And well, the other thing too, is you could look at it saying, well, he's making his move quicker uh, and he's beating the defense. So um you know, he's he's where he's supposed to be or where he wants to be faster because mm-hmm. he's more committed to uh, uh, to um, seeing the opening and going after it right away. I would argue that, yeah. I think he's just been a, a much better decision maker, whether it's passing the ball, getting off it, or just attacking mismatches that he can exploit. Um, I think he's been great in the post. I think he's learning how to play with his back through the basket a little bit more. Um, I think that's been a big part of his game. If if his shooting numbers were better, if like he just shot the ball better, you you laugh at what he'd be doing right now. I mean, he's the shot over the past month just hasn't really quite been there. He's taking a lot more pull ups right now, um, mm-hmm. which is fine. It's just they're just tough shots, and sometimes they go and sometimes they don't. So looks as a team are way up uh, on pull up shots this month. That's been kind of what's been going well for them the past couple of games. They've been hitting a lot more pull up jumpers, but. If Tatum's shooting percentages were just a little bit higher, like you'd be talking about him as, you know, in the MVP candidacy. I don't think he's there right now. There's some of the other guys ahead of him, and it really doesn't matter with his team. Um, but if he Christian McCaffrey, that's yeah, your there, you, there you go. Yeah, listen, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm it was somebody's... the sun, Steve. I'm I, I don't disagree with you for one second. It's amazing all these different quarterbacks that people are trying to shove down our throats in the MVP conversation. When it's if it's not McCaffrey, it's Tyree Kill. It's none of these other guys that people want to talk about. That's anyway, all that. sorry, I just said, you know, no, it's fine. I just it, it. I just think with Tatum, it's it's We're it's a lot board. of things in terms of just playing faster and and being more yeah. confident in his decision making. That's really about yeah, it. I agree. Although I do think that that's it's kind of an interesting point. You know, last year. I don't know. Maybe it's just something we talked about a lot on this show, but I, I feel like last year there was a lot of it's the Tatum's on the MVP mission. It's get out of Jason Tatum's way. Like that's, that's, and, and it's not, he wasn't saying that was the most important thing to him and he never would. And I don't even necessarily believe that it was. I think this guy wants to hoist a banner as much as anybody else in that locker room. But there were a lot of people trying to make it a story. Like this is the MVP year for Jason Tatum. And we don't have that this year and on and and not because the results aren't there it's it simply it just feels like that hasn't been a real talking point this season why do you suppose that is from last well, year well if you remember when ray allen and paul and uh, kevin garnett got here the big storyline and it wasn't from the media it was them talking about it this way um they were talking about hey look we've already accomplished all the individual honors. Mm -hmm. We've got the, you know, the all-star appearances. We've got the the points we've established ourselves and now we want to win. Unfortunately, not everyone comes into the league with winning games being their priority. It's like, you know, I remember talking about this with Pierce years ago, guy comes into the league. He wants to establish himself and he wants to be seen as an all-star, all these things here. And I'm not saying it's consciously guys, you know, Celtic players saying, you know, screw winning. I want to get my points and I want to get my recognition. It's not that. But, you know, you're someone that's been a competitor or been in competitive situations, at least, uh, to get where you are. You've beat out a lot of people. Um, And there's a need to, um, you know, uh, be seen as the guy when you get there. You know, you you. It's why guys who uh, come in like a Derek White, totally unheralded and all this stuff, and becomes a key player. You know, what is there about Derek White uh, physically and all these different things that should make him as important as he is? It's between the ears. It's how he approaches the game. Um, So, you know, that's the deal, I think. I think uh, that's that's what you're seeing. Yeah, and they talk about it. This past press conference, they were talking a little bit about, you know, Tatum's like, we all know, you know, Jalen Brown was second team all NBA last year, and he's just not going to, you know, it's he's going to score less. He's just not going to, it's he's not going to be on that list. Tatum is, 
you know, what been a first team NBA player for the past two years, but, and he's averaging less than he, you know, you had what 30 points a game last year. He's not going to touch that this year unless he goes super nuclear, but it seems to me like that, that just doesn't really matter right now. These guys seem it's to better be not if they want to win it better not matter. Yeah. Right. Because again, they have other guys in the team that can all score. I mean, poor Zingas okay. is unbelievable. Derek White is shooting the crap out of the ball right now. And then there's just Drew Holiday who's here. And then as we mentioned, Al Horford off the bench, what a luxury that is. He's been unbelievable since Porzingis went down. He's been almost perfect every night because nobody's perfect, but he's been spectacular every night. So again, them, it's more about like, it feels like a trust thing to me, understanding that at the end of the game, it doesn't have to be you. It can be someone else. And those guys around you are really good basketball players. And maybe this is the year they realize that, Steve. Yeah, look, I mean, um, it's to me the ultimate Celtic trivia question. And, uh, you know, I've uh, been selling it for years. Um, no Celtic has ever led the league in scoring. Six players who played for the Celtics have led the league in scoring elsewhere, but no Celtic has ever led the league in scoring. What does that tell you? I mean, what, what was uh, the, the hallmark of Celtic basketball over the years? I mean, um, I've always said that there wasn't a day in Bill Russell's life that Will Chamberlain wasn't uh, a better basketball decathlete in terms of he could do all the little, all these things. But, um, but Bill Russell understood the object of the game in a way that Will never quite did. And I love Will. He was a great guy, but that's the fact. And that's how the Celtics mentality has always been. Um, Larry Bird is seen as this, you know, all time, one of the all time great players. But you talk about his passing as much as you talk about his scoring. You know, here's a guy that could score at will in a lot of ways. And can you imagine if he'd have ever paid attention to the three-point shot the way that the NBA does now? Mm -hmm. um, you know, but um, so that's the thing is that, you know, that's what wins basketball games. You know, it's, it's being better, having more talent, sure. But it's how does that talent play? Does it, does it play – in a way that makes you a winning team? Does it promote winning? Um, that's, you know, that's where it's at if you want to win championships. And I think that should be, should have been proven by now. But yeah, yeah people pressure. fall into the thing of like, you know, well, they've got two all-stars. They've got, three, you know. Certainly last year's champion should have proven that, yeah? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it doesn't hurt to have the best player in the league, but at the same time, he everybody collectively made a lot of sense. He yeah, tried but, was, but was Nikola Jokic the best player in the league physically? He could do this, that, and whatever? No. He was the best player in the league because he promoted team basketball. He he was going to get points, whatever, but one of the reasons why he was – why this big lumbering – I shouldn't call him lumbering because he's a better athlete than, than uh, he gets credit for, which – was the same with Larry Bird, but he had more opening to get to the basket because he had spread the ball around and defenders had to stay closer because when Jokic had it, their guy could be getting it and could beat them. So, you know, um, Larry Bird was a better outside shooter because he someone had to pay attention to Kevin McHale and uh, Kevin McHale was a better low post player because his man had to, you know, uh, he had more room to move because guys had to, had to honor Bird and stay closer to him. It's how you spread the floor. But if if I'm a non-shooter and my guy can play off me, then it screws everybody. Denver isn't the best team in the NBA standings-wise, for whatever that's worth. But obviously, the defending champs are still incredibly good, incredibly impressive we're a ways out clearly and, and injuries can strike and all of that. But as you see it, if healthy, you know, team versus team, Boston versus Denver, if, if, if the Celtics should come out of the East and the Nuggets come out of the West, are the Nuggets still the most dangerous team that you see? Yeah. Um, you know, um, you never know the Lakers are, you know, do not sleep on LeBron. Hmm. Um, but, uh, there are times when Anthony Davis does take naps. <laughs> um, so, you know, but when that's the thing, that was the, you know, the game he had in the in-season tournament finals. It's like, 
that's the biggest indictment of him. You know, that he was that great that game. It's a different team when he's like that. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, you know, this team's up there, you know, health is going to be the key uh, or a key, obviously. But I would still think Denver's, you know, the the most uh, dangerous opponent that any team from the East is going to face out there if, if in fact, he, the Nuggets get that far. Um, but they, hey, look, they, they miss Bruce Brown. We're you know, these guys yeah. played important roles for them. Even Jeff Green, who was like, a, you know, what games is he on? What games is he off guy for much of his career? Certainly while he was in Boston, he could have produced a heck of a lot more. But yeah, um, you know, um, I, I, I look at Denver still as the class out there and I've got to see more from other teams. And, you know, there's, there's a difference between regular season basketball and playoff basketball. And there are teams that have great regular season runs. Um, but how tough are they when it becomes a possession for possession game? So, you know, you're going to need to see a heck of a lot more out of Minnesota before you kind of believe them, I would think. We've heard a lot of people say, you know, if if they're right, if, you know, if, if they're playing their game, no one can touch the Celtics. Now, it's you can choose whether or not you feel that way or believe that, obviously, anyone out there listening. But, you know, that's that seems to be just a a, a, a building opinion out there is the Celtics have just they're so dominant that that when they're right healthy available all of that like this is the team at the very least in the east if not the entire nba this is the team in the eastern conference specifically who's the other one or who's the closest is it milwaukee after adding damian lillard is it another team what do you think well um yeah I, I, milwaukee another story you didn't read of mine um <laughs> i they, do read you know, your stories you know well evidently not um so, uh, look, they're, the people that are, that are looking at them, people on the league, uh, GMs, personnel people, look at them and wonder uh, about their defense. Um, Lillard and, and Ted Acampo, Giannis, they played a lot better together. They played better complementary basketball. And it's going to take a while for those guys to, to I think, get in sync. Um, but the question is going to be defense with that team. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Milwaukee probably would be the, the, the biggest, uh, competitor for Boston. And it's not that the Celtics, I, I would, you use the word dominant. I don't think they're necessarily dominant. I just think they're better than the people they're playing. Um, so, you know, but they're not like blowing your doors off. Um, they're just simply better. I would agree with that, but I I, I think uh, as they move forward here, you know, keeping them together, keeping them healthy is going to be ultimate, the sure. most ultimate important thing here. And sure, absolutely. In terms of teams that scare you, I'm always just going to have Miami circled. I don't care what their roster looks like; just don't care. They just they, I'm, I'm always just in awe of the accomplishments. They're they're incredible. Well, it's the Jimmy Butler factor. It's and the Eric Spolster factor, and that guy's. I just every time tip my cap. Fair. Have anything to add before we let Steve go? No. Uh, I just, Jalen Brown, it's been spectacular lately, and I want to point that out. I'm very pleased with some of the developments that I hope we, if we've seen flashes of recently. I hope they stay because the guy that we've seen recently is very, very good at basketball. And if he's committed to moving the basketball like he's been, that's the secret sauce. But you look at it, at his – you know, his numbers looking great, but we talked about not looking at the record, looking at how they're playing. Yeah, he's been playing his overall fantastic. The the one on one, which becomes a one on two, the turnover thing. Um, everyone, everyone that handles the ball a lot is going to commit turnovers. But it's how you commit them. Is it do you commit them because you're turning into somebody that you should know is there, but you didn't think about it or see them? Um, so I think, you know, I like when he, I like when he moves the ball quickly and gets it back. Um, I, I think, you know, less for him and Tatum, both the fewer dribbles, 
the better. I just love those guys. I think they're two of the best handful of finishers in the NBA. And um, when you see more of that from them, you'll see more of the best that the Celtics can be, I think. Steve Petty is a senior NBA columnist for Heavy.com, Heavy on Sports, the Twitter account. You can get him on Twitter on X at Steve B. Hoop, where, of course, he does post his articles and writes about such things. Some people lies. some people read them. <laughs> I do read them. My goodness. I'm under so. attack. I'm under siege here on this particular show. He writes about the decline of the Warriors the questions surrounding the Bucks and all of these other great things that we have already discussed. The Bucks one was a while back, Hoffman. That's that's on you, buddy. <laughs> it's on me. The Bucks one got posted. Oh, you talk about the uh no, the there was one that got posted today. Oh, okay. Then I missed that one. Oh. Well, at two. At two, Evan. <laughs> I missed it. I'll get to it. I promise. It's appointment reading when Steve Bullpet tweets. It is. That's not even it a is. joke. <laughs> We've always said it. The joke. We're big. No, it's not a joke. We're big okay. proponents of the anyway. The bull pet wrapping it up. Written word. All right, we'll let him go. We're gonna wrap up too. Check out this show on uh wherever you get your podcast. Rate, review, all of that good stuff. Most importantly, subscribe though. We do appreciate it. We'll have another show for you later on this week. And uh, we'll we'll see how this West Coast swing is going. We look forward to it. But, Steve, we do always appreciate you hopping on with us. We'll bug you again down the line for sure. Take care. All right. For Steve Bullpet, for Evan Valenti, I'm Adam Kaufman. This has been Celtics Beat on CLNS Media.